Hi everyone, it's me, Krillius, Team Racing Productions MC and producer. And joining me today is the legendary, iconic Racing Pendarvis. Bam! <laughs> Happy Hi, everybody. Yes. <laughs> Greetings and salutations. salutations. <laughs> Hey, Racine, we are joined today. I'm so excited that we have Kathy Rena and Andy Garcia joining us today. Hello, hello, hello. Hey, everyone. <laughs> Kathy, you're on mute. There you go. Still there after three go. years, I haven't figured it out. It's great to see your smiling faces is what I was saying. It is great to see both of you. It's great to have you both here with us today from the National LGBTQ Task Force. Um, and actually, to kick this off, I want uh, any one of you to just talk about the National LGBTQ Task Force and what, it, and what it does for those who are watching. And also introduce yourself and give us a little bit about your background. So anyone can go. Mr. Garcia, I'll let you go first. <laughs> Sure. So, hey, everyone. Andy Garcia. My pronouns are he, him. I am the Director of Advocacy and Action at the National LGBTQ Task Force. Uh, we were founded in 1973 as the National Gay Task Force. Um, we are now the National LGBTQ Task Force. Um, we um, are a leader in the, the realm of LGBTQ freedom, um, equity, and justice. Um, we are an intersectional organization that operates through a racial justice, economic justice, reproductive justice uh, frame. Um, and I'm currently working on an, any number of, of uh, issues, including immigration, reproductive justice, um, non-discrimination protections. Um, we are fighting on the national level as well as on the state level. We've, we've seen a lot already starting to happen this year and, and trust that we are on top of all of it. Um, and I will turn it over to my colleague, Kathy, to introduce herself. Thanks, Andy. Um, Kathy Renna, she, her pronouns. I'm the communications director. I mean, the way I always sort of do the, the quick synopsis is that the task force is the queer organization, the progressive movement, and the progressive organization in the queer movement. So, you know, we are, we're out there and we're really understanding that our community is extraordinarily diverse and that we bring all of ourselves to the table when we are talking about the different issues that Andy outlined. And so I'm, I'm just, I'm always honored and thrilled to be able to, um, to work with the task force to, to really get all of us moving forward. Of course, of course, that is so important. And one of the things that uh, the first time I was ever exposed to even knowing about the National LGBTQ Task Force when I was back at Howard was through the creating change. So uh, I know the past couple of years have been, you know, it's been a pandemic. Um, however, creating change is coming is here for 2022. Talk us through that and what the what it looks like this year. Sure. I, you know, as anyone who knows me, Krilios knows that I can talk about the Creating Change Conference for days. And in fact, I do. Um, my, my job prior to being the Director of Advocacy and Action was actually the Director of the Creating Change Conference. The conference was founded in 1988. Um, it is the largest queer activist conference in the country. We typically, in an in-person context, get 3,000 to 4,000 people the last time we gathered in person was in Dallas in 2020, just before um, we all know what came next. Um, that was January 2020, so I don't need to take us back there, um, except to say that was the last time we gathered in person, and it was an absolutely magical event. Um, I've been going to the conference since 1995. The conference in 2020 in Dallas was perhaps one of my favorites. Um, it is an incredibly inclusive conference on every level. Um, over half the participants are people of color. Um, over a third identify as trans or non-binary. Um, half the conference is, is under the age of 30. All income levels, all abilities. We are very proud of how accessible it is. ASL interpretation, mobility scooters, Spanish interpretation. As anything we can do to accommodate folks, um, we, we, we try our best. We're not always perfect. Um, 
I will say we were thrown a curveball in 2021. So that was our first virtual creating change. We got about 2,500 people for an online conference over four days. Uh, I loved it. It was out of body experiences. I was sitting in my apartment in front of my computer and I kept thinking I have to go down to the lobby and check in with my people. And I, there is no, we're not in a hotel. So somehow we managed to replicate a lot of the feeling of the conference in a virtual space. Um, we thought we would be in New Orleans um, last this past January, so last month. We held out hope. Omicron told us no, so we pivoted once again back to a to a virtual conference, which will be happening March nineteenth and twentieth. A little bit scaled back. We know that folks are probably a little tired sitting in front of their computer for four solid days, so we've scaled it back to two days of what we think is the the cream of the crop in terms of the programming, the most popular things that we offer. Awesome. What can people expect from it this year? So as, as Andy said, we really picked the, you know, sort of highlights of the weekend. And I will say that, you know, I've only missed a few of those 34 years. I, I won't, you know, my age is just a number and mine's unlisted, right, Racine? Um, yeah. I remember going to my first media training at Creating Change back when it was in Washington and it was, you know, maybe a few hundred people. So, you know, this is a place where people really are forged as activists and come together and, and learn for themselves and also just create incredible um, networking and community. It's uh, like Gandhi said, you know, the lobby is actually one of the most fun things at Creating Change often, especially in the evenings. Um, but what we're doing this, this weekend of March 19th and 20th is really exciting. Um, we have our Saturday plenary, which is being opened by Beverly Little Thunder who is an extraordinary uh, indigenous uh, native activist. Um, and Saturday is, you know, for me, one of, the, one of the things that really energizes me for the rest of the year, which is our annual state of the movement. Um, and this year it will be Kira Johnson, our executive director of one year, joined by our relatively new deputy executive director, Mayra Hidalgo Salazar, who I know you've had both of them on the show. You made both of them cry, which is <laughs> awesome. I love that as communications director. Um, and they're going to be offering a vision for, not just for the organization and the community, but really for the movement, you yeah. know? And, and I think in, in the expansive way that so many people are looking for with all of the different ways that we're being attacked, as Andy was saying, you know, we're gonna be dealing with an onslaught of anti-LGBT bills, reproductive, anti-reproductive rights bills, um, you know, critical race theory attacks, uh, voting rights. It's really just, um, it's an opportunity to connect all of the dots on all of the things that we care about. Um, and then Sunday, uh, our closing plenary will be, um, will be given by uh, non-binary advocate activist, uh, fashion icon, Alok, who mm -hmm. is um, also the, the, the nibbling of Urvashi Vad, who was once the executive director of the task force and will be receiving an, an award at the conference as well. So uh, that's gonna be, that's gonna be something very, very special, very, very moving. Um, and so we're really excited about that. And uh, our MC for the weekend is going to be the, the wonderful, political, talented, funny Sandra Valls, who just yeah, really, you know, she just tied everything together and, and made people feel like she was in their living room last year when we did the conference virtually. Like, like Andy said, we were a little bit nervous about it. And for those of us who've been at Creating Change so many times, we, we thought, is this going to feel the same? And, and in so many ways it did. It was really, it was really incredible to still have that sense of community and networking and meeting new people. And, you know, maybe it was virtual in a chat, but like we still made those connections. And so yeah. Sandra was able to, to really personalize it and make everybody feel like they were, you know, part of, part of a, something much bigger. Um, and we have some other events happening throughout the weekend as well. I'm going to let Andy talk about those. Sure. So, I mean, I have to say I am totally um, a fan of, of Alok. Uh, this is the, having them speak at the conference is a dream come true. I've been following them for years and they've been creating change family for a long time. Mm -hmm. um, they, if you haven't seen it, Jonathan Van Ness's new um, series on Netflix, Getting ah, Serious. Yes, yes. I, I saw is, them on that as well. Yes an episode called by say bye can we say bye bye to the binary featuring oh, right, alok right. and it was it was fantastic um so i'm really excited um and also check out their 
Uh, they are the creator of Degender Fashion. They're all about um, decolonizing gender. They're an author, so they have a new book, Your Wound, My Garden. They are just fantastic. I'm super excited about them, um, as well as um, our Agents of Change house ball. So for years now, we've had a house ball. It's a mini ball, um, but there's big trophies, cash prizes. Um, we always involve the local community wherever we are. Um, we went virtual with it for the first time last year. And honestly, I thought to myself, how on earth are we going to do a house ball online? <laughs> and we work with an amazing team um, of, of coordinators um, from LA, New York, um, and Miami. And they were like, trust us, we got this. We can do this virtually. It was Again, like Kathy said, it was like so you're there in person. People were walking, yeah. walking the ball, and it it just felt great. And you know, afterwards, I was having to send Western Union all over the world because we had we had winners from Philippines, <laughs> Colombia, Spain. It was just really fantastic that the wow. virtual space. Opened. It was a global ball. Who knew? I love that. And you know, that's the good thing ball. about what has this whole. Uh, experience this virtual new reality thing. It has taught us that even when we go back to in-person events, that those who are not able to make it still can pop in through the wonderful world of re virtual reality, can come and see and be a part and see things. So it, it's expanded our horizons on so many levels that even though we've been trapped in and when we come out, we won't be trapped anymore. We'll just be inviting others who can't come into the party. And I think it's just an amazing thing. And I love the fact that when I think about creative change, every time I go and to see so many young people, you know, and then to see my age represented as well, you know, our AARP members in the building, you know, and it's so wonderful that the younger people are so, they want to sit with us mm -hmm. and they want to learn from us and they want to hear us and we see them and they see us at creating change and it's such a wonderful thing that everybody, which sometimes you don't always get at a lot of pride celebrations. Yes, yes. Unfortunately, we don't get that kind of, we're loving on each other like we should in all spaces, but creative change is that one space that allows us to bring all of that together in the umbrella of love and fellowship. And, you know, and, and it teaches us the importance of diversity. And yes, yes, it's always, you know, when I when I went to Howard um, and I was a part of Cascade, it was one of the things that, you know, people look forward to every single year, you know, making it to creating change and then coming back and being able to tell all the fabulous stories about the people they've met, the connections they've met, the things they learned, because what would really happen so many times for the four years I was at Howard for was there were so many things people would learn at Creating Change that we would then bring back uh, to Cascade that would then, you know, develop into how we were going to move forward as an LGBTQ organization and how we were going to implement these changes, you know, at school, at other organizations and stuff like that. So it, I just love Creating Change so much. The work it does, the type of community it builds, the conversation, you know, it builds because uh, when I just started at Howard the first year, the same conversations we were having the first year were transformed by, the, you know, my final year, let's say. Like the first year, there was not a lot of people that were well-versed in things in like non-binary issues or the trans, many trans issues, pronouns and things like that. And it's just so um, amazing to see how this has just transformed over the years when I was there. And by the time I left, we there were different things that you were learning coming into the organization that if you had come a few years before, you probably wouldn't have gotten that. And a lot of that was uh, due to things learned and garnered from the Creating Change Conference. So I, I've got to say thank you for the impact and the work that Creating Change does to our communities. Yeah, that's such an important point. It is really a culture shaping conference. Mm -hmm. um, I remember the first time I couldn't tell you when it was it's all a blur the 90s, <laughs> early 2000s, when I was like gender inclusive restrooms. 
wow, like, okay, yeah, that <laughs> makes all the sense in the world. Why haven't we always done this? Oh, right, we do it on things like airplanes, what? Um, mm -hmm. Pronoun usage, the first time I was in a workshop mm -hmm. session and people were asked us to say our pronouns and I was like, this is, this is gonna be a practice that takes off and sure enough, it did. I'm not suggesting that these two things started at creating change, but I think they very well might've, it might've been the spark that set mm -hmm. it off. Um, and to your point too, also, like you were speaking about all the, the skills and knowledge that people learn. So we haven't even talked about the other piece of programming that's happening in the two-day conference on March 19th and 20th. We've got, ooh, I should know off the top of my head, around 15 day-long institutes. So we're not going to do the hundreds of workshops. We're actually going to space those out throughout the year in a new program we're calling Creating Change 365, mm -hmm. which is a year long series of virtual mm -hmm. engagements. So people aren't gonna be left waiting a whole year. Um, but during the two days, we're gonna do the institutes, which are wide, widely pop, wildly popular. So mm -hmm. the first day will be the Black Institute, the AAPI Institute, the Indigenous Institute, um, the uh, White People Resisting Racism Institute, and the Union Equal Square Cell Latinx Institute. Um, those five are going to be off the hook. They're always, they always are. Um, but because it's virtual, we're just going to get, once again, like hundreds of people in each of those. So each of those is going to just be this, like, think lab of, of hundreds mm -hmm. of people working together to try to figure out, you know, where we go as a movement. And then the next day, just a whole round of exciting um, institutes, including some new ones, queering, uh, queering um, climate justice is something we haven't done before. First time. Um, our first time. Yeah. So tons of just engaging con uh, content, the, the Bi Plus Institute, um, I shouldn't start listing them because uh, it's going to take take a while. But <laughs> but yeah, so so we're really clear on like the skills building and the movement building activities as well. You know, uh, you can go to the house ball, but you should really treat yourself to some of those transformative sessions, the day long Certainly. institutes as well. Sorry. And I know that uh, the task force has upcoming things next week, the start of March. Mm -hmm. Get into some of those for me, Kathy. Uh, sure. I was talking about this a little before with the Mandy. So. We have some events that will be preceding creating change. So um, next Thursday we have um, we have a panel discussion. Uh, Queer the count. Uh, the task force did a huge campaign just as the pandemic was beginning. So we had to completely pivot to virtual. But we did a huge queer the census campaign, and the the task force has been working on census issues for over a decade. In fact, mm -hmm. I think one of the most wonderful successes we've seen is that the person who was heading up that campaign now works at the Census Bureau because they have become such a resource um, and did such an amazing job. So Megan Mallory's now at the Census Bureau. But next yeah. Thursday, we're gonna be doing a panel discussion to um, talk about um, the results of the census, what we can be doing better. Um, they'll also discuss their work to capture more data about LGBTQ people, because that's you know an area where we still have so, so much work to do. Um, and the American Community Survey, Household Pulse Survey, Economic Census are all places where we can start to you know, dig deeper to try and learn more about our community. Um, and then we have, uh, we have a panel coming up in March about the Equality Act. Um, and you can find all of this on, our, on, our, on the website at uh, thetaskforce.org. You can go on our social at the task force on Twitter and Instagram. We'll be posting on how to register for these events and how to participate. They're all gonna be uh, super and leading up to creating change, which as Andy said, you know, it's a, the, the great thing about creating change is it does have, not just something for everything, for ev everyone, but everything for everyone. So you can go and you can learn and you can network. And then at night you can celebrate, you know, you can see the joy and love and resilience of, and diversity of our community. And to me, that's what creating change has always been about. So it's super exciting. And it's also super exciting that we're going to be doing work all year round. The yes. idea of a, a creating change 365 is something that I think everyone's going to be very excited about and want to participate in and can really, you know, carry the organization through because things are happening all year round. You know, we go to creating change in January or in this case in March, but usually early in the year, you know, get energized for the year ahead. And boy, do we have a, a doozy of a year ahead, right? Through the midterm elections. Mm -hmm. um, but I think it's gonna be great to have the opportunity to come together to really do deep dives on issues and have substantive conversations about things with experts and activists and, and, and the real people that are affected by them you know, throughout the calendar year. 
Certainly, certainly. Well, I mean, this has just been so great to talk with both of you to learn more about Creating Change this year, Creating Change Remixed. I love it. So many fabulous uh, presenters, guests, so many fabulous things to do. I mean, I am so, so excited for this and Creating Change 365. Who doesn't want it? every day of the year, right throughout the year, leading up to next year. <laughs> so thank you so much for coming here and sharing everything with us. Uh, I want to remind everyone, so it's March 19th and 20th, it's online, and you can go to creatingchange.org. And how can people follow and keep up with everything the LGBTQ, uh, the National LGBTQ Task Force is doing? Well, the best way is to follow us on social. We're on Twitter, mm -hmm. Instagram, and Facebook um, at the task force and also um, at task force AF, which is our action fund, which is our C4. Awesome. And to those who are watching, the links for that will be in the description below. So go ahead, check it out, get involved right now. Thank you, Kathy. Thank you, Andy. Thanks so much for being here with us. And thank you for the amazing work you do in our community. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank Good you. to see you. You too. And to those who are watching, please follow Team Racing Productions on all forms of social media. Like, comment, and subscribe. But most of all, thank you for watching. Bye, everyone.